Inspiring interviews with today's top landlords. This is the Rental Income Podcast. And now, Dan Lane. Jeff, I got to be honest, you've really kind of caught my attention here. Is this right that you're making $300,000 a year off one Airbnb? Uh, that's a great question. And yes, uh, we are making three hundred grand a year on one house. That almost sounds too good to be true, but we're going to get to the bottom of it and figure out how Jeff is making $300,000 a year off one single family house. Let's take a really quick break to thank our sponsors. We'll come right back and we'll meet Jeff Brown from Utah. A good deal on a rental property isn't going to last very long. To win properties today, you need to move quickly when a deal comes on the market, but it takes time to analyze a property. I want to let you know about an app where you can analyze deals on your phone in seconds. It's called Ask Rick. That's R-I-C for Rental Income Calculator. You can analyze a deal with the push of a button. You can figure out the rent, your mortgage payment, your expenses, and figure out the cash flow. If the numbers make sense, you can make an offer right there on the app, or you can send a calendar invite to your agent to see the property in person. Ask Rick is currently offering a free seven-day trial. Just search for Ask Rick in the App Store or go to Just Ask Rick. That's R-I-C. Just ask Rick.com. It's a lot of work to find a really good rental property. And when you actually find that property, you want to make sure you're working with a lender that can get that loan closed. The lender that I recommend is Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. She's a nationwide lender and her specialty is helping investors finance rental properties. She has a ton of loan programs and she can find something customized to you for your situation. If you want to find out more or you're ready to get started today, just go to RidgeLendingGroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E LendingGroup.com. NMLS 42056. Rental Income Podcast. Jeff, before we get into your story, I, I think we should talk about your background for a second because I, I think that's a big part of your success. So you have a background in data. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I actually come from the tech startup world. Um, the, the company I used to work for uh, did e-commerce analytics. And so my, my background is in taking large amounts of data and uh, pulling insights out of it. So that's what you've done with, with Airbnb is that you looked at the Airbnb data and kind of figured out how you could profit off that is is that right that's exactly right so t- talk to me about this so so you've got one house that is making three hundred thousand dollars a year in gross revenue so tell me about the house like what what, what what's this house like yeah great question um so it's a house uh in well right near orlando florida uh it's a it's a in a community called champions gate It's an eight bedroom house, so it's quite large. Um, And we themed it out completely from top to bottom uh, in a wizard theme uh, for all of those uh, going to Universal uh, and wanting that experience. uh, And we kind of extended that experience for them. So, what's a wizard theme like? So, what is the house like? What exactly did you do to to make to make a theme for the house? Yeah, so um, if you go, basically, we, we want the the house to be like a, a story. It has a storyline. So when you walk in, um, everything is like you're in a, like a castle, um, and each bedroom uh, has a custom carved bed with murals all over the walls. Uh, so, for example, one of them, you walk in and it has this kind of uh, you know vintage. Ford car uh, that that flies, and uh, um, you know it's it's got murals of um, uh, kind of European uh, landscapes, uh, things like that. Um, and each and every room of the eight bedrooms is themed to that kind of that wizard theme, if that makes sense. Wow. Okay, so it's it's almost like you're creating an experience that they're not. This isn't just a place where they're going to stay after coming home from doing whatever they're doing during the day. This is this is kind of like a destination. 
Exactly. Yeah. And to the point to your to your point of it being an experience, um, we pride ourselves on creating what we call immersive experiences. So when you walk into a bedroom, for example, um, there's more than one light switch there. There's a light switch and then there's a uh, there's a sound effect switch and there's a button for the fog machine and all kinds of things. So we really, we really go the extra mile to create that immersive experience for guests. So going the extra mile that that's really what has made this property so profitable that people are willing to pay a premium for all the upgrades you've done. That's right. So let's put this in perspective. So if you had just bought this house and you rented it out as it, as it was, what would this house rent for? As a as a long term rental, um, it would it would rent for about let's say four grand a month. So we're talking about forty eight thousand a year. Okay, forty eight thousand a year versus the three hundred thousand that that you're getting now. What if you what if you kind of were in the middle and you made this an Airbnb, but you didn't do all the 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 crazy upgrades to it? How much would this house rent for just as a regular Airbnb? Yeah, our our competitors that are not themed are making between eighty to a hundred thousand a year um, as a short term rental. So three times as much money by theming it out. That's right. Wow. Okay. So, how much did it cost you to do all this? Like to to fix the house up like this? Yeah, um, the house itself cost about four hundred eighty thousand. That's when we bought it. Obviously, prices have gone up since then, but we bought it for four hundred eighty, and we put about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in theming and rehab into it. So we're wow. all in at about seven hundred and thirty thousand. Okay. Now, how did you figure out how to theme the house? So I, I, I get that you looked at the data, and that kind of led you to to the market, but how did you figure out that people were going to be willing to pay a premium for a, a, a themed house? You know, that part just took a lot of guts. I would have to say, mm-hmm. um, we were very nervous to put this in much, this much money into the house because as you can imagine, you know, that a lot of the money that you're putting in doesn't necessarily, come out in uh, appraisal value, right? Right. Um, so we really kind of went all in on this idea that we needed to be unique and different because Orlando in the short-term rental space um, is one of the most competitive markets in, I'd, I would dare say, in the world. Um, it's got tens of thousands of vacation rentals in the area. And we knew that the, there was tons of demand there. Uh, but if we were going to even be on the radar, we had to be different. And that's why why we did what we did. And and it was a big risk. There was no data to suggest that what we were doing would actually pay off. Um, but we, we went all in and, and it worked. So. so there's no other houses like this? Like your competitors are just renting out regular houses, right? <sighs> that's right. And, and especially when we did this, there have been lots of um, people coming into the market trying to do what we're doing. Um, but uh, the only, com- com- I would say, competition are some 15 bedroom mansions in a in a resort called Reunion that they put tons of money into their homes. I mean, those are multi multi million dollar homes, and we could see that the revenue in those was really high. And so, if we could come close to that, um, you know, that was the, really the only comparison. But it's hard to compare to a 15 bedroom when you only have an eight bedroom, right? Now, what about when you're getting the appraisal? So when you're when when you're fixing the house up and you you've put the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars into the house, like how, how does that work with with the appraisal? Like, are, are, is the appraiser giving you any credit for that at all? No, they really don't, and um, that's that's a, a risk that you take with um, what we're doing is that the equity value, you know, in essence, you're, you're kind of upside down in a way. Um, right. But the cash flow there creates a lot of business value. Now, the appraiser may not look at that and tell the bank that it's worth a lot of money. But at the time when it comes time to sell this property to a business, they will see the value of that, um, that cash, right? So, so 
um, it's a, yeah, go ahead. So that's, you, that's your, your goal that you want to sell this house as a business at some point. Yeah. And that's, that's really where the, the real value comes in. Right. Um, you look at, if you look at uh, commercial real estate, you know, they sell properties at a cap rate or a multiple of profit. Right. Mm -hmm. And if we were to sell our properties at a multiple of our profit, even somewhere near the current going market rate, would double or triple the value of our properties in a very short amount of time. And so that's really the end goal for us is creating highly profitable businesses out of these homes and then selling them to a company that wants highly lucrative assets. And there's companies like that out there? Yeah, there's a lot of big um, private equity uh, companies that are looking for uh, um, high yield assets. So that means they're they're producing above five percent cap rate, um, and we would we would be able to deliver on that. Okay, so long term, you want to sell this house as a business, but in the short term, this house is generating a ton of cash flow for you. That's right. When you buy the property, so in in with this property, for example, you bought it for four eighty. Do you just get a mortgage for 480 from the bank? Um, so usually if you're going to buy an investment property, you know, you, you have to put down 20% or so. Mm -hmm. um, what we do is we get a, a bridge loan or a construction loan. And that kind of covers a lot of the rehab. Now, they, don't, they won't cover staging like theming rehab. Um, but they will cover some of the more traditional rehab, new countertops, new flooring, that kind of thing. Um, and then once all the project is complete, uh, then you get the the refinance and you get a, a more standard loan, like your conventional loan. Um, and that usually is at like an 80% loan to value. Um, and that's kind of how we, how we finance them. Okay. So w with this house in particular, so you bought the house for 480 you put two fifty into fixing it up, so you're all in at seven thirty. How much? How much of a mortgage can you get on that property? Um, so, I would say probably two hundred thousand is not going to be loaned on, right? Okay. That they don't see that as value. So, um, if you let's say we're all in at seven thirty, and you subtract your two hundred, you're all in it, you know, 530, mm -hmm. they'll probably loan on 80% of that. Okay. So, um, you're, you're, they'll loan you probably 425, um, of the 730 that you're in. Okay. So, so you're, you're getting that, that money, the bulk of the money is the bank money. And then where is the rest of the money coming from? Do you have investors? Yeah. Um, and that pays for the down payment and all the rehab. So all the okay. cash that's required to go in. Um, then we basically make it a passive investment for them by doing all the work, um, not only the rehab, but it, as well as the management. Okay, interesting. Okay, so so you, the and net the effect of that is that you don't, you're not putting in much or any cash yourself. It's it's mainly bank money, and then your investors. That's right. Now investors like to see that that the um, the sponsor us. Uh, puts in some of their own capital. They call it skin in the game. Um, so we do invest on the investor side of things, um, whether it be 10% or, or more of the total fund. Um, we just like to show our investors that we're, that, that we have this skin in the game and that mm -hmm. there's, you know, that there's mutual, um, uh, alignment of incentives. Right. Okay. Well, let's take a look here at the numbers a little bit more and see how everything works. So, You've got three hundred thousand dollars a year in in rent coming in. Now, after you pay your your, so I guess like let's start with the mortgage payment. What's the mortgage payment on on this property? So, mortgage on this property is about three thousand um, dollars on that four hundred and twenty four thousand okay. dollar loan. All right, so the mortgage is three thousand a month. That's thirty six thousand dollars a year. And that includes your taxes and insurance? That's right. Okay. Now, another big ex expense with vacation rentals is the management. How much do you do you pay the property manager? The going rate in our area is about 20%, and that's what we pay. Okay, wow. So that, that's a lot. That's like $60,000 a year in management? 
That's right. Wow. Okay. And then utilities, like this sounds like a, a big house and you're in Florida. So I, I imagine utilities are probably pretty expensive, right? They can be, yeah, especially in peak season. Um, we average about 800 a month for for all the utilities. That includes electric and you know, we, we even lump Wi-Fi into that. And things okay. Like that. What about like booking fees or like what other kind of expenses do you have? Yeah, Airbnb charges about 3% for booking fees. Um, VRBO charges about 5% depending on the, the, their uh, subscription plan issues. So. Okay, so after everything's all said and done with, with all your expenses, repairs, anything else that, that might come up, how much do you actually profit off this property? Um, somewhere between one hundred and thirty and one hundred and fifty thousand a year. Wow, that is incredible on one property. And do you have multiple uh, of these Airbnbs going on? We do. Yeah, we're we're really trying to build our brand. Um, we have uh, soon to be four themed properties uh, in Orlando, uh, and we have nine going up on the Gulf Coast of uh, Florida. So is is this typical? Like, are you profiting about a hundred thousand on each property, or is this one kind of an anomaly? I would say the one we're talking about is is more of an anomaly. Okay, it really does insanely well. That said, the rest of them do very well uh, too. I mean, our, our typical revenue is somewhere between one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand a year on on each property. And we're, um, our margins, our cash flow is somewhere between 30 to 40% of that number. Okay. So, so still pretty, pretty healthy margins. So with this house in particular, the one that we're talking about, like the reason that you're making so much on it is because you, you've put so much money into it and you've created this theme, right? Is, is that why this is making more than your other Airbnbs? Yeah, and I and I can elaborate on that. I'd say that this one particularly is doing so well because of its particular theme. Um, it resonates very well with the with people that are that are going to visit, you know, Universal Studios, um, and it's also gone viral on YouTube. Um, it's been covered in publications, and so that's really part of the strategy that we have is creating properties that post them on social media that go nuts. People share them with all their friends and family. And that's really what makes them profitable. Right. Okay. Why not do more houses like this? Like, wh- why not have three or four or five houses like w- with a very similar theme or like, why not, why not do more of this? Yeah. It, initially it's something that we considered, but um, to be honest, if you're not, very, very careful um, with themes. Uh, you can upset um, you can upset brand owners that um, you, you, you deal with a fine line, right? Um, and if you do a too good of a job on a theme, um, you can get a cease and desist pretty quick, which is what happened to us. Oh, so, wow. Um, we got that within a month of being live. And um, had to work through those details. So we we eventually settled on something. But um, the reality is you have to be careful. And we, we signed that we would never do another theme like this. Interesting. So, so it's like Universal or, you know, whoever is the, the, the copyright holder, like they had a problem w- with the theme that you did? They they did, and it's interesting because there's a lot of properties out there that do a sim- that do the exact same theme, and they're more blatant in their um, in their uh, in their theming and, and in the things they put in their home. They're less generic, uh, but we uh, I guess we just did a good enough job where they felt threatened, or maybe it, we made it look like we're made of money, mm-hmm. and they they came after us. So. You just you just have to be careful. Yeah. With those types. So did they make you change anything? Yeah, yeah. We had to change quite a few things. Um, they had to you know send someone through the property and inspect everything and make sure it was not infringing on their copyright. So wow. Uh, okay. So it, but after those changes, they they were fine with what you're doing. Yep. It always amazes me how many different ways there are to make money in real estate. It's really incredible. 
If anybody has any questions for Jeff or if you want to talk to him about investing in one of his future deals, I've got his contact information on the website. You can find it at rentalincomepodcast.com slash episode 358. I'd like to thank today's sponsor for making this episode possible. It's Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. If you're looking to buy a rental property, whether you're just getting started or you want to add to your portfolio, the lender that I recommend is Chaley Ridge. She's a nationwide lender, and her specialty is helping investors finance rental properties. She has a ton of different loan programs, including her new no-doc loan where she's just going to look at the deal. She wants to see if the numbers make sense and if the property is going to cash flow. If it does, she will give you a 30-year fixed rate mortgage without looking at your tax returns, pay stubs, bank statements. I mean, she literally just wants to look at the deal. If you want more details or if you're ready to get started today, just reach out to Chaley at RidgeLendingGroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E lendinggroup.com nmls42056 thank you so much for checking out the podcast today make sure you follow the show we put out new interviews every single tuesday and if you follow the show you'll get notified as soon as new episodes come out my name is dan lane and this has been the rental income podcast